Jesse, I want to thank you for being with us today and for being willing to open up your life for the help of other people. Um, I noticed that he had anger issues like really early on. Um, the little things, you know, the way he acted when he had a flat tire or, you know, just his person, I guess, just just was a side of him. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually saw it early on that I didn't know that he was violent, but I knew that, you know, something wasn't right with him. It all started with the name calling. Mm -hmm. Anytime anything went wrong, it was always my fault, somehow, some way. Um, there was an instance one time when he had a uh, flat tire, mm -hmm. the tire blew out, and we were on the way to a going away party for him because he was supposed to leave and go to work to Alabama to work a while. Okay. And um, so he was actually moving there. And um, this is when we first started dating. And we were going to a friend's house, the tire blew out, and he just flipped out. Like, I mean, just, it wasn't even a temper tantrum. Mm -hmm. It was a anger, hate, like, everything was my fault, you know, get this, do this, like, very controlling and just, it was crazy to me. I've never really seen a person act that way over a tire before. I mean, I'm a woman and I still would have called for help or something. Right. I wouldn't have. <laughs> I've never seen anybody act that way over a tire. So it was like little things like that. Um, he ended up leaving and going to Alabama, getting fired from his job on purpose to come back to be with me. You know, at the time, I'm thinking, well, that was sweet. Like, mm -hmm. you know, who would give up a career? Who would, or, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't know this guy that much. And for someone to do that for a person, you know, made me feel like he was going to invest a lot into mm -hmm. this relationship. You know, and, and he explained the whole tire thing. He was leaving. He was going through a lot of stress. He didn't want to leave me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm still thinking to myself, that, well, that's not okay. Right. You know, we definitely talked about that. And then he hit me in the nose. One night he was drunk and I was trying to um, roll him over. I didn't know if he was going to get sick. Mm -hmm. um, and he punched me in the nose in front of his friend. His friend was there. And um, of course my nose started bleeding. Um, next day, I'm sorry. I was drunk, it was alcohol, it will never happen again. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, people make mistakes. You right. think to yourself, you know, I'll let this one slide. Right. You know, he's very sorry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you think you care about someone, it's easy to just let things slide sometimes. But I didn't, even then, I didn't realize how violent he could be. Like, I mean, you think, it's common sense. Well, if he hit you in the nose, you know, you should leave him. And a lot of people say that until you're in a situation. It's a lot different when you're in the middle of it than it is exactly. being on the outside looking in. Yeah. One time we went camping in Taylorsville, and I had taken my daughter's little boombox, little CD player. And, um, of course, he was drunk again. And he wanted to, for some reason, we weren't even arguing or anything. He just wanted to throw the boombox in the fire. Wow. Yeah. I mean, just crazy thing. And I'm like, you know, this belongs to my daughter. You can't. And I went to take it out of his hand. And when I did that, he threw it and grabbed me and pushed me on the ground and took a hot stick out of the fire. And he held it to my neck and burned me from my chin all the way down my neck. And I screamed so loud because obviously he burnt me that the people next to us on the other campsite called the police. That's good. And the police came. This is and this I really remember this specifically because I feel like this is the only time the police ever really helped me. Um, the police came and obviously knew he was drunk. They obviously knew that he hurt me, and of course I'm afraid to tell them in front of him what he's done to me. Um, you mean all the other things? Before exactly. Okay. Yes. Because there's times I've reached out to the police and no one helped me. Um, so the police get there and they're like, you know what, we know he's done something to you. We have witnesses. We've heard, that's heard you scream. 
um, and I had a burn on my neck. I mean, it was obvious. So they couldn't get him for domestic violence, considering we aren't a married couple or anything. So they picked him up for AI and actually took him to jail. Really? So that way he would be away from me. But I picked him up and he, of course, didn't remember this time what happened. Oh. I don't remember anything. And That's then I showed him my neck and it, it had already started to bubble wow. with blister from where he burned me. I'm surprised I don't have a scar there. And you know, you get caught up in this whole, oh my gosh, what happened to your neck? And and, and you start to lie to others and you lie to yourself because you don't want to believe that this is what's going on in your life and you're so ashamed of it because you think maybe I did do something to cause this. Maybe I did say something out of the way or maybe I should just learn to keep my mouth shut or I know all that's not true now but at the time because you're, you're thinking that there has to be a reason for this. Like, people just don't do this for no reason. Same people don't. Exactly. And, you know, I did care about him. I, I, you know, every lie told, I believe, you know. Mm -hmm. 